There are so many things to be said about the 30th anniversary of the Reebok Pump Shack Attack, the very first signature shoe for Shaquille O'Neal, and unfortunately, not all of it is good. Hey guys, welcome back to a Kicks Reasons channel, and today we're looking at the 30th anniversary Reebok Pump Shack Attack that is officially releasing this Friday globally on Reebok.com and all of their retailing partners. But those of you that have kept their eye on my Instagram page, you probably noticed that I've already posted pictures of this shoe being sold on Finish Line. And as always, Finish Line uh, jumping the gun and selling early releases at least two, three weeks before the official release. If you're lucky to be around one of those locations that the store managers don't really care, they've already put these out on shelves and they are for sale. One of the bad news this year, this release is uh, for $180. And I personally believe for $180, they're absolutely not worth it. And why am I saying this? This is coming from the mouth of the guy that is all about Reebok and Reebok Shack Attack is in his top five sneakers of all time. And I personally owe over 30 pairs of this specific shoe. Um, and yeah, I'm going to walk you through why am I saying this, why it's not worth it. Unfortunately, for the anniversary and this latest release, Reebok significantly lowered the quality of the shoe. Um, first, I'm gonna mention the good things that I think they did well. And of course, after that, I'm gonna follow up with all the negativities because I'm not going to spare you all the information that you deserve. Because if you're going out there to spare your hard earned money, you should be getting the maximum value for that dollar. Now, first and foremost, what I consider to be a very close to the original and probably the closest to the original pair shape is this latest release because you see the toe box it's absolutely slanted there's no reinforcement right here on the toe box like on the previous pairs and behind me is my 2001 of my 2013 pairs which i'm going to bring and show you some details on the close-ups and you will see that the previous releases had reinforced toe box which again the original pair did not it was like free flowing like this so you put them on uh, it was more one-to-one -one fit and uh, this shape is very close to the original one and if i reach back real quick and grab the 2013 you will see how the toe boxes are different noticeably different this one reinforced goes way up where this one not reinforced is slanted and i really really like what they've done here uh, with this specific uh, version the second and very pleasant surprise for me is the density of the midsole the midsole of this pair the 30th anniversary is very soft i don't know what kind of uh, eva compound they did here but it's extremely soft compared to all the previous ones including the 2013 including the, the original one the original one was not soft midsole it was eva that was pretty dense very reminiscent to the 2013 pair you can hardly squeeze the midsole and feel any give where here any uh, light squeeze on the midsole reflects on uh, the uh, cushioning so uh, this is a much softer midsole and i absolutely appreciate it i'm glad that they did this because uh, comfort uh, is definitely beneficial third and probably the last one that i'm considering to be a major win is again using carbon fiber or graphite i don't know why reebok is not calling it any more graphite because that was their trademark and they should be calling that as it was uh, and the reebok shack attack was the first basketball shoe to feature carbon fiber back in 92 way 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 before nike uh, so yeah uh, Reebok was all about technology. That's why it was my favorite company because it had all that tech behind it. The Graphlite, the Hexalite, the Pump, the DMX, all kinds of other technologies that no other company have ever had before. Now, on to the negatives, unfortunately. First and foremost, a lot of people are asking me about the pump. Well, it pumps, but not like the 2013, not even like the previous release. So you will be uh, working hard with your thumbs over here to get any air inside uh, and just like the previous release the right one pumps better than the left one uh, and once you hit maybe 20 30 pumps you will hear uh, the valve releasing the air so yeah it pumps but again not as easy as this one 
obviously not as easy as the original one but this one you do like five six uh, pumps and you can hear it it pumps very easily it's much uh, nicer to pump and this one actually on my left one you'll see when i pump the pump kind of sticks in there so it's not it's not ideal definitely the quality is not where i'm expecting it to be especially for 180 dollars now the next and very big issue for me is the use of materials here the shack attack was known to be one of the highest quality sneaker ever made by reebok at the time almost entirely done in genuine leather hence the 2013 was still all around genuine leather toe box side panels everything that you see on this shoe in 2013 that is white that is genuine leather minus the little patch around the pump which was synthetic but everything else is battery smooth creasing leather that i absolutely love and this shoe was incredible because of that now over here we have very thin cut leather on the toe box which i'm still not convinced is genuine maybe because the coating they put on it but all around panels here all around the hill right here everything else is synthetic and you will notice it immediately if you're a big uh, genuine leather buff like myself you pick them up in your hand and you kind of look at the back where the shack uh, logo is which by the way is better stitched and better machined than the uh, than the 2013 pair but that's fine you know I, I had no complaints about this one either it still look uh, very good and just like the original one but here unfortunately i'm looking for a grain and i'm not finding anything in the back this is all synthetic this uh feels and smells and creases like a synthetic leather uh, so again asking 180 dollars for almost entirely synthetic shoe um, for not perfect pumps i I'm, I'm sorry but my heart cannot tell me this shoe deserves to be 180 dollars for this kind of materials 125 max just like the original one considering the original one had all the good stuff so my advice to you is wait for them to go and sell yeah these were provided to me from reebok uh, but reebok i'm sorry you know i'm fair on my judgment whenever i like something uh, i will tell you and whatever i'm not liking something i will tell you again and uh, 180 dollars for a shoe that is made in synthetics it's not okay uh, you will see the the ton some misperfections on the cutting right here where on the 2013 was almost perfect and uh, i don't know why they keep doing these cuts you will see on the on the ton kind of like they cut the ears of the ton over here where the original one and the 2013 they were going upper like they were on the original kind of like looking like ears uh, and the tone was much higher anyway yeah these kind of changes in, are absolutely unnecessary i think uh, they're just putting off the customer from a shoe that uh, brings not only incredible legacy of reebok innovation design uh, shoe designed by judy close one of the greatest designers of all time from reebok designed so many black top models the omni zones uh, obviously the first shack attack the second shack attack the third shack attack and you're kind of destroying this legacy with with this with this shoe uh maybe the today's generation is not used to seeing genuine materials and you guys decided that if you put this on shelf somebody's gonna buy it anyway but guys like me they grew up with the shoe and this was the highest desired shoe back in 92 93 from any kid in my school when we were in high school uh, having this shoe was like, I don't even know how well to compare it today. It's not even close to having an airplane. If somebody comes and tells me, hey, I just bought a jet, I'll be like, okay, cool, great. Back in the day, if somebody told me they bought Shack Attack, I was blown away. I couldn't believe. This was the most impressed I've ever been when my one of my best friends won the lottery and he actually bought a Shack Attack back in the day. It was absolutely incredible. That's what I'm saying. Top five of all sneakers of all time. It doesn't matter what design. It doesn't matter what ear. This was the shoe. Everybody wanted to be like Shaq. Everybody wanted to have his shoes. Uh, I don't care what everybody says. Back in 92, 93, it was the year of the Shaq and the year of the Shaq attack. A little bit, a little bit of a letdown. And even, even if I pick up my black and azure, you will see this shoe back in 2013 was done in all genuine leather obviously this is a pair that i've been wearing 
You'll see some creasing on the toe box, but I don't care about that because genuine leather creases and supposed to crease. But here, all around the leather is buttery smooth. You will see when I run my finger, it's just high, high quality, super nice, thick leather. That's why we fell in love with the shoe. Genuine materials was the thing to have. Back in the day, when you see a sneaker that was made in synthetics, or normally meant it's a knockoff, or it's much lower brand and nobody cared about. Everybody cared about the genuine materials. Um, hopefully the Black and Azure also releases. A lot of people have been asking about this shoe. Luckily, I have six pairs maybe from 2013. So uh, hopefully they're gonna hold me up for forever uh, because I'm wearing these and I absolutely love them just because of the materials and everything else. But yeah, um, the inner liner has changed. It's not the same as the original one. It's not the same as the 2013. Uh, the insole was changed, uh, they put Ortolite, which is, yeah, okay, great, you put Ortolite, but I prefer the one on the 2013 because it's just like the original one. Anatomically correct uh, Reebok Athletics insole with arch support. Uh, the direction of the letters, uh, all men count on you, uh, but, not, but none too much, and the Shaq logo is different, uh, orientation and size is different. Uh, again, not sure why this was necessary to, to be changed and especially the color of the top of the insole. The original one was blue, like on the 2013. And this one is black with Ortolite. Yeah, small changes like that that most people will not notice and they're not really visible. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, also, these are claiming to be Azure, but you will see even the 2013 is a little bit shinier. Uh, this is more muted on 2022 and the original pair was even more shiny huh? it was uh almost like i don't know late 80s tracksuit shiny but yeah these are these are kind of things that i'm noticing right away uh, the biggest problem for me is the synthetics used um really disappointed honestly having a, a shoe that is costing 180 dollars that is bringing such a huge legacy uh from reebok 30 years from this design timeless design in my, my my opinion this shoe is still amazing today i'd rather wear this shoe than any other nike any other jordan model anything else pretty much on the on the market right now regardless of what they're offering as technology uh, as an everyday shoe i'd rather wear this it has more style and looks much much cooler than anything else uh, out there uh, at the same time i know the production was moved to vietnam i know cutting costs had to be done I understand how the business works, but if you can put genuine leather on Reebok classics like uh, Club C or genuine leather models that are $80, $90 to $100, you can't convince me that you cannot put the same materials on this shoe. This shoe deserves to have genuine materials and leather. You guys are gonna see them on feet. They still look amazing on feet, uh, just, like I, just like any other uh, Shack Attack. Again, very nice touch for having the toe box uh, slanted, just like on the original one. Uh, that was a surprise actually to me, and I'm not, uh, I was not expecting to see uh, this touch. Excellent, excellent uh, option. Uh, I'm really hoping that uh, this toe box is genuine leather because on the first touch, it doesn't look like it is. Uh, maybe just the peel coating on top of it is uh, not is preventing me to, to feel it, but the cut is very, in, uh, not even close to the one that we had on 2013 on the previous uh, releases. Now most of the Shack Attack releases over the years, the limited ones, the not limited ones were made in genuine materials, minus two, three models that were uh, synthetics, uh, sort of, you know, modern uh, style ones. Maybe that's why they decided to cut them off from releasing. Some of those were never released that I personally have. But the Shack Attack is such an iconic model that in any form, I absolutely love it. I just cannot justify the $180 for synthetic materials. I think it was a big mistake for Reebok to, uh, do, them, to do them like that. Uh, yeah, so long rant off. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you like this video. Uh, hit the thumbs up. If you do, stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you're new. I'm gonna try to show you any new release that is coming up, do comparisons. Uh, give you my honest opinion. I've been accused already multiple times on Instagram that I've been paid off by Reebok and don't get me wrong I'm extremely grateful to Reebok for sending uh, pairs like that that I can review for you and show you the details when there's something I feel the need to criticize I still gonna do it and show you my honest opinion So yeah, that's pretty much it guys till next time you have a wonderful day